Okay, so with the figure beta launching today on the Nintendo Switch, we wanted to take a look at the latest free to play to join the console and break down everything that you need to know about it. So what is the game essentially about? How does it play? How does it look compared to the Xbox version? You know, beginner's tips, I've got it all here for you today. So with that though, hit subscribe if you love the Switch as much as we do. We're bound to have the content for you. Check out our channel as well for some eShop gift card giveaways that are happening right now. We do them weekly and with that, Let's get started. Okay, so Wall Story is little more than a single screen of text here. It sets up the location. Norway, 1991, the nuclear war is over. Central Europe is devastated and Norway has become kind of like the last stand. With all walks of life now coming here, we see a new future, a new path to survival as an outlander where we must basically create our own future. While it's nothing deep, it more than sets up the world. And also I gotta say, it sets up a really nice tutorial mode where we're guided through the basics of movement, combat, equipment, and yes, yeah, so on, as we navigate like an intro map, an intro world. It's an impressive opening, which when compared to most that just kind of throw you into the deep end and let you go, it works out really nicely for you, the player. So this is not Fortnite, nor is it PUBG. Even though it might look kind of similar to the latter, this, it's not a battle royale, not a last man standing kind of vibe going on. Shooting, killing, that all takes a back seat to what's the core of this one, and that is loot. The idea is simple, enter a map with eight to 12 players, discover points of interest, loot as much as you can, and then find an escape. Locations, they range from tents with low value items to full on buildings and safes which need to be broken into. So once you've gotten everything you need, escape from one of like the five or six exits you're going to find scattered around. So starting my first match, I was just trying to grab everything, but the longer the match went on, the more risk presented itself. Plus, a lot of the locations I came across then had already been raided. My advice is just get what you need and get to one of the escape points as quickly as possible. Now, if you do survive through multiple encounters here, you're gonna see a toxic cloud approaching. This is much like the ring in Fortnite and PUBG. The difference though, it's not forcing you to kill each other, but for all of you to just run as quickly as possible and get to that exit point. So if you die in figure, it might not sound like a big deal, you know, kick back to the main menu and start all over again. Yeah, with figure, you lose everything you're carrying, and I mean everything, not just what you found in the map, but you're going to lose all of the weapons you carried in, the bullets, you know, anything, the health packs. That's a whole lot of sacrifice just to check, you know, one more cabinet for nothing more than a pack of bandages. My suggestion here is play smart, play quick. That's all you need to do. Well, except for the satisfaction of winning, because of course, we let's face it, we all want to win, you'll get XP, which in turn levels up your character. This will normally award you with like new abilities, so things like you can upgrade your base quicker and so on, but it also gives you loot crates. These can be anything from common to rare, and they're going to contain everything from blueprints for new weapons to items you can carry and use through to the in-game currency. So when it comes to figure, my first mistake, I jumped into a match, equipped a submachine gun, a sniper rifle, and a pistol. I felt ready, I was excited, it was about to start. And then it loaded, and it hit me. I had no ammo. Don't just press start with this one, you need to take your time. Bullets, guns are all separate, they're all in different menus. You're gonna need to prepare and take it kind of slow for the fight ahead. My next mistake, second match, I loaded every weapon with like 120 bullets only to die 20 seconds in, and I lost it all. They got them. It was a good day for them, a bad day for me, so take what you need, be realistic, and don't go crazy running out of bullets and having to escape is better than losing such a valuable resource. Some matches I literally went with just a pistol and just sprinted as quickly as I could, grabbed what I needed and got out. I had a goal and killing anyone or even interacting with anyone wasn't one of them. I wanted to work just on my base solely. So the main reasoning behind all of this gameplay though, it's building the best base you can. This is your hub and every game basically starts here and you can consider this like an interactive menu essentially. Want more options though? Simple, upgrade your base. This, it can be everything from simply repairing your roof at the very beginning to adding electricity and completely redoing the interior. Each of these, though, it's not just visual, these actually come with perks as well, like generating currency on a daily basis, producing resources that you can use, or simply increasing the number of repairs you can do at once. With each upgrade needing different materials and having multiple levels of improvement, you'll be able to sink a ton of time into this. 
This though is why you're looting in battles. These resources you collect impact where your base can go next. So my initial problem with this one was I approached high value locations way too quickly. My first base upgrade I needed like metal sheets. Yet I was going to the biggest of big locations on the map. And I found some really cool stuff, don't get me wrong. I, but did I really need it? Not even slightly. Currency, sure, that's nice. And the rare items, they're, they're cool. But I have no use for them right now. Understanding what you need going into a match is so important with this one. Tense those small locations, they'll have exactly what you probably need to start your progression. So start small, work your way up. I know you want to go to that cool ass church on the map, but ask yourself, what are you trying to achieve right now and do you really need to get into a firefight? So this is not Fortnite guns react as you would expect in real life with kickback and fire rates. When faced with a battle though, first recognize that ammo is a valuable resource so don't just go in like your John Wick's cousin. And then two, don't just spray and pray here. Once that first shot happens, everyone is going to like hear it so be accurate, be quick, in and out. Sometimes as well, running away from a battle is a respectable option. Okay, so while no options are presented to you in this beta build a figure, to my understanding, it's gonna contain seven varying maps. And yeah, you get to see them in the beta, you just can't choose which one you're gonna play on. I really do like what we get here though, from small towns to like countryside locations to snow-based ones. Each provides a nice variation on the last. My favorite so far was Grantheim Valley. Lots of places to hide on that one, but once you can choose your map, it's gonna be a lot better because then you can customize your outfit to that particular location. Like I was going into the snow map with like jungle five gear on and you kind of, doesn't really work in that sense, so I can't wait to have that option more free and more open. So currency here, and it's done with crowns, where you can unlock a small amount in-game and in crates, which we'll cover in a second. This provides the payment side of the game. These crowns, they can be used to advance your character's level. You can use them to, let's say, purchase skins and obviously clothing items. But then, most importantly, you can use them pre-match on the kind of like the, uh, the lobby screen, and you can add one of three perks. Increase the quality of the loot in-game, increase the quality of the loot boxes, or give yourself insurance. While everyone contributing to the first two impacts the whole match for everyone, the last one, insurance, that's just for you, meaning if you die, you lose nothing you were carrying. Some may, however, see this last option as a pay to win option, and honestly, I can kind of see that, because it means those players willing to spend real, like, real world money can be a bit more gung-ho about things. And yeah, I will say as well, insurance, great place to start if the game comes with a, like a free batch of crowns for you to use on full release. So how does it play on the Switch? Well, I will say it plays fine. It's just the graphics that are the problem here. The blur is real, and it's a massive downgrade from the Xbox version. Now, it's not that it's bad, but some maps definitely stand up better than others here. In a game like this, the higher the visual fidelity, the better off you're gonna be. I'm a big fan of sniper rifles in these sort of games, but the problem here, with the amount of popping in game, you're gonna struggle to be able to use one because, well, Look at this moment, for example. The enemy is literally stuttering across the screen. The animation is non-existent, and it just made it nearly impossible for me. Fortnite, I will say as well, also suffered from this same problem on the Switch. Look, it's not bad, it's just far from perfect, and playing here, I think it's safe to say you're gonna be better off playing at close range. So when it comes to modes as well, you're also gonna get single player and co-op, but that's my initial impressions on figure. I'm curious to see how pricing works with the in-game currency moving forward. I'm also curious to see just how many people jump in. Problems wise, it's really only the visual suffering. Pretty much everything else is the same. It plays great, the controls work, the frame rate is solid. And I think it's fair to say that if you want something a little bit different, this one has you covered. It's a nice, unique game and I can't think of another one like it on the Switch. Just expect to come to this Switch build and make some compromises. Thanks so much for watching, hit that subscribe button if you love the Switch as much as we do. Leave the video a like if we helped you out and let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. With that, we'll have a full beta impressions video coming up once this closes out and we'll see you all on the next video.